Lesson 9 at the amusement park. Park rides. Hello. Today we're going to review gerunds and learn negative gerunds. And then we're going to study infinitives. But first, let's learn some new vocabulary. An amusement park. An amusement park. An amusement park is a large park with many special machines you can ride on. There are also many games that people can play to win prizes. A roller coaster. A roller coaster. Roller coaster is a track with sudden steep slopes and curves. People ride on it for excitement in long cars. A ferris wheel. A ferris wheel. A ferris wheel is a large upright wheel with seats on it for people to ride. A merry go round. A merry-go-round. Well, a merry-go-round is a machine that turns around and around and has model cars or animals for people to sit on. A bumper car. A bumper car. A bumper car is a small electric car that you and other people can drive in a special area. You try to hit other cars in the bumper car. And Amusement Arcade. An amusement arcade. An amusement arcade is a place where you play games on machines by putting money in them. Have a gondola. A gondola. Well, a gondola is a kind of ride in which people can sit and view the fair from above. Next we have a spook house. A spook house. A spook house is a ride that goes inside a house filled with monsters and ghosts. Children enjoy this ride. Two more. A go-kart. A go-kart is a machine with an engine and an open frame. It looks like a small race car. And finally, a pony ride. A pony ride. Well, a pony ride is a ride for children. They can sit on a pony and ride it with the help of their parents. Here we have cotton candy and caramel apples. Cotton candy and caramel apples. People like to eat cotton candy and caramel apples at the amusement park. So let's repeat these. An amusement park. A roller coaster a ferris wheel and a merry-go-round, a bumper car, let's go over here, an amusement arcade, a gondola, a spook house, a go-kart, a pony ride and cotton candy and caramel apples. Gerunds. Let's review what we learned about gerunds, and then we can learn some negative gerunds. A gerund can be used as a subject, as we can see in these sentences. Riding the Ferris wheel makes me dizzy. Playing games at the arcade is boring for Tim. Eating caramel apples is wonderful at the amusement park. Drinking cola isn't good before you ride the bumper cars. Well, a gerund uh, may also replace nouns or pronouns as subjects, objects, or complements. Let's practice. Can you give me a sentence with a gerund as a subject, Monica? Going on the Ferris wheel with my boyfriend is very romantic. Excellent. Rosa, can you do the same? Planning an evening at the amusement park. With your little sister is stupid. She saw her friends and left me alone. That's bad. Thank you, everyone. And now looking and listening is a good idea. 
Look and listen. Spending money at the arcade is fun. Listening to the music and riding a merry-go-round makes Paul sleepy. Getting money from your parents is very important before going to an amusement park. Reading a book on the roller coaster is impossible. Read and repeat. We also learned that gerunds can be used as the objects of prepositions with certain phrases. For example, John is angry about losing all his money at the arcade. My friend is nervous about riding on the roller coaster. Yvonne is interested in going to the park next week. I'm thinking about working in an amusement park next summer. Now, when a verb form is used after a preposition, it must be a gerund. Some examples of prepositional phrases followed by gerunds are angry about, nervous about, excited about, talk about. Interested in, worry about, think about, and responsible for. Let's practice. Monica, what do you like most about the amusement park? I'm always excited about going on the rides. I like being dizzy. You're crazy. Okay, Lewis, what do you like? I'm interested in watching the people. There are many beautiful girls at the amusement park. Yes, you're right, Louis. Rosa, what are you interested in? I like thinking about going on the rides. When I go to the park, I am afraid. You should go on the children's rides. Okay, thank you, everyone. Now let's think about looking and listening. Look and listen. Paul is angry about seeing his girlfriend with another boy at the amusement park. We are excited about going on the bumper cars. My father wasn't happy when I told him I was interested in working at the park. Jane is nervous about being hit by another bumper car. Read and repeat. Let's review gerunds as the object of a verb. For example, I finished doing my homework so I can go to the amusement park. Jack enjoys watching his children on the rides. Ken always avoids eating cotton candy. Polly can't help going on the rides. They are a lot of fun. If a verb form follows certain verbs, it must be a gerund. Examples of these verbs are avoid, finish, can't help, imagine, consider, miss, enjoy, spend time. Let's practice. Rosa, what do you avoid at the amusement park? 
I avoid eating too much. Rice and food don't mix well. You're right. Louis, what do you miss about being a child? I miss spending time with my parents at the amusement park. Mm, we always had a good time together. I enjoyed that too. And Monica, what do you enjoy the most about the amusement park? Last night I enjoyed living the most. Uh, I knew I would be very tired today. Good answers. Thank you everyone. Now, don't miss looking and listening. Look and listen. Barb avoids the go-karts when she goes to the park. Joe can't help thinking about the merry-go-round. Kathy really enjoys eating caramel apples at the fair. After she finishes drinking her milkshake, we can go on the bumper cars. Read and repeat. Infinitives. Now let's learn infinitives, and we'll learn them the same way we reviewed gerunds. An infinitive is to plus the simple form of the verb. To plus simple form. Some examples are to want, to ride, and to go. Now, infinitives are used the same way gerunds are. They can replace a noun or a pronoun. Let's look at some examples of infinitives as subjects. To operate a good amusement park is difficult. To own an amusement park is a lot of work. We use an infinitive as a subject when we want to speak formally. Normally, a gerund is used, as in these examples. Operating a good amusement park is difficult. Owning an amusement park is a lot of work. Let's look at another use of infinitives now. Take a look at these sentences. It is difficult to make a lot of money working at an amusement park. It's exciting to go on the roller coaster. It takes three or four hours to see the entire amusement park. It's easy to have fun at the amusement park. Infinitives often follow it as a subject of a sentence. And they follow the adjective. So we can have it plus the adjective. plus the infinitive. It plus an adjective plus an infinitive. In the first sentence, difficult is the adjective. It is difficult to make a lot of money working at an amusement park. The infinitive to make follows. Put this on the board. It is difficult. The adjective to make the infinitive following the adjective and then it continues. It is difficult to make a lot of money working at an amusement park. The second sentence we have it is exciting. Exciting is the adjective so following the adjective is the infinitive. To go dot dot dot. It's exciting to go on the roller coaster. Negative sentences can also be made. So let's take a look at some of these examples. It isn't difficult to make a lot of money working at an amusement park. Well, let's practice. Monica, what's the best thing about an amusement park? 
It's fun to watch children come out of the spook house. Some of them look very frightened. I was always frightened there too. Lewis, what's the most boring thing for you? It's boring to go in the arcade. I'm too old for that. And you're right. And what's interesting for you, Rosa? It's interesting to ride the go-karts. They go so fast. Very good. Thank you very much, everyone. And now it's interesting to look and to listen. Look and listen. It's exciting to take your children to an amusement park. It's difficult to go on the bumper cars with a broken arm. It's easy to spend a lot of money in the arcade. It's fun to choose a ride to go on. Read and repeat. Let's look at another way to use an infinitive. Ollie has decided to go to the amusement park tonight. I forgot to bring my free tickets to the spook house. You have to be 18 to ride the bumper cars. Pete hopes to win some money at the arcade. Now when some verb forms are used after a verb, they must be followed by the infinitive. So we have one example. Verb plus infinitive. And some examples of these verbs are agree, have, decide, hope, fail, manage, forget and seem. So let's say the verb, for example, agree, have, and many others. They are the objects of the verbs. The infinitives are the objects of the verbs. Now some verbs may be followed by an infinitive or they may have a pronoun plus the infinitive. Another type we have is verb plus infinitive or pronoun plus infinitive. For example, I asked to buy some tickets. I asked Mary to buy some tickets. Fritz needs to buy a ticket for the Ferris wheel. Fritz needs you to buy him a ticket for the Ferris wheel. So in these sentences, a pronoun or a noun may or may not be used. Some examples of these verbs are ask, promise, expect, want, need or would like. So let's have a look at some of these verbs. Put the examples. Ask, for example, need and many others as well. Okay, we have a third example. Some verbs must be followed by a pronoun or a noun before an infinitive when they are in the active form. So some examples of these verbs are Advise, invite, convince, remind, encourage, and teach. And let's put that form on the board. We have verb plus a pronoun or a noun plus the infinitive. Infinitive. 
And some examples of the verbs are advise or invite and many others. And you simply have to learn. There's no easy rule. You just have to learn these verbs, verb plus infinitive. These verbs is verb plus infinitive or verb plus pronoun plus infinitive. And these verbs, always verb plus pronoun plus infinitive. You simply have to learn them. Let's look at some of these verbs in sentences. Yvonne advised you to bring a lot of money to the park. Candy won't convince Andy to go on the go-karts. The Smith family has invited Fred to go to the amusement park with them. Now when these verbs are used in the passive voice, they may be followed directly by the infinitive. For example, you were advised by Yvonne to bring a lot of money to the park. Andy won't be convinced by Candy to go on the go-karts. Fred has been invited by the Smith family to go to the amusement park. Well, let's practice. Rosa, what are your plans for the weekend? I am planning to go to the amusement park, of course. There's nothing else to do. Okay. And Monica, what do you advise her to do? I advise her to bring a lot of money. It's expensive. It is expensive. Are you going to ask anyone to go with you? Rosa? I'm inviting Louis to come with me. He is funny. Thank you. I will remind you to wear warm clothes. It, it will be cold. It will probably be cold again. Thank you very much, everyone. And now I advise you to look and to listen. Look and listen. Helen agreed to go to the park with her boyfriend. Don't forget to take some antacid pills with you. Those rides will make you sick. Mike asked to leave the park because he was tired. Paul's dad taught him to drive the go-karts. Read and repeat. Let's look at negative infinitives. Have a look at these sentences. It's important not to be nervous on the roller coaster. It is good not to forget your money before you go to the park. Okay, so not is used before the infinitive in negative sentences. Let's have a look at this. It is important. It is important to not be nervous. So, it is important to not be nervous is incorrect. It's not correct. We have to take away this and put the infinitive here. So, not must be before the infinitive to be. It is important not to be nervous. Let's practice this. Rosa, what is important for you at the amusement park? It is important not to forget to buy the tickets before you go. They are cheaper that way. Good. And what about you, Monica? It's difficult not to be frightened on the roller coaster. You're right. Louis, what do you think? It's difficult not to be romantic on the merry-go-round. My girlfriend got angry when I tried to kiss her. No, you're a Casanova, Lewis. Thank you, everyone. So, now I want to remind you not to forget to look and listen. Look and listen. 
It's easy not to remember where all the rides are at a big amusement park. It's frustrating not to be able to go on all the rides because you are young. One of the most important things is not to get sick on the first ride. It's smart not to forget to bring a lot of money to the park. Read and repeat. Let's look at one more use for infinitives. Have a look at these examples. It's easy for Mike to go on all the rides. And Jim waited for her to buy park tickets. So we have for plus noun or pronoun and plus an infinitive. This form is often used with an infinitive. For, noun or pronoun, plus an infinitive. Let's practice this now. Let's make sentences using for plus an infinitive. Rosa, what's boring at the amusement park? It's boring for me to watch my little brothers and sisters to go on the children's ride. Mm, thank you. Lewis, what's exciting for you? Um, it's exciting for me to go on the roller coaster with my girlfriend. I like to frighten her. That's not very nice, Lewis. <laughs> what does your father do at the amusement park, Monica? He doesn't go. It's, it's too risky for him to go, to get excited. And he has a bad heart. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry about that. Now it's time for you to look and listen. Look and listen. I'm waiting for Tom to take me to the amusement park. It is necessary for Alan to leave. He is always causing problems on the rides. It's important for people to observe the rules on the rides. It isn't easy for Rita to watch the rides. She can't go on them because they make her ill. Read and repeat. Use of gerunds and infinitives. Now let's learn when we can use the gerund or the infinitive. Have a look at these sentences. I can't stand to go on that ride. I can't stand going on that ride. I prefer to arrive at the amusement park before it opens. I prefer arriving at the amusement park before it opens. Karen loves to ride on the bumper cars. Karen loves riding on the bumper cars. A gerund or an infinitive can follow some verbs with little or no difference in the meaning. Some examples of these verbs are begin, like, can't stand, love, continue, prefer, dislike, start, and hate. So let's put this on the board. One. We can have some verbs plus a gerund or an infinitive. 
And some examples of these verbs are, for example, begin or love, etc. You just have to remember. There's no rule. You have to remember the verbs. Let's practice these. Which rides do you prefer, Monica? I prefer to ride on the bumper cars and I prefer riding on the ferris wheel. Excellent. What do you enjoy at the amusement park, Lewis? I love to play games in the arcade. I like watching the people. Good. Rosa, what don't you like at the amusement park? I hate to pay a lot of money for the tickets. I hate losing all my money in the arcade. Good job. Thank you, everyone. And now I hope you love looking and listening because it is time now. Look and listen. Jerry has begun to learn how to operate the roller coaster. Jerry has begun learning how to operate the roller coaster. The gondola will continue circling the park. The gondola will continue to circle the park. Read and repeat. Review. Let's practice. I want you guys to give me two sentences using a gerund as a subject. Monica, you give me two sentences uh, about a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. Luis, you can tell me something about the arcade. And Rosa, two sentences about a gondola. Monica, what are your sentences? Here are my sentences. Going on a roller coaster is very exciting. And trying to eat something on the roller coaster is stupid. Very good. What are yours, Rosa? Here they are. Riding on a gondola can be dangerous. Operating the gondola is boring. Great. Lewis. Spending money in the arcade is easy. Wasting money in the arcade is easy. Very good. Thank you very much. Now let's do another exercise. This one can be a fill in the blanks. Uh, I'll give each of you two fill in the blanks with the appropriate gerund. Lewis, you can go first. Anna is angry about something. Her tickets for the spook house. That's the first one. And I'll write the second one on the board too. Ken is excited about something Lots of caramel apples at the park. Anna is angry about her tickets for the spook house, and Ken is excited about lots of caramel apples at the park. What do you think? Anna is angry about losing her tickets for the spook house. Uh -huh. Ken is excited about eating lots of caramel apples at the party. Good. At the park. Good. Anna is angry about losing her tickets for the spook house and Ken is excited about eating lots of caramel apples at the park. Okay, next one. Monica. John isn't interested in something the games at the arcade. And the second one. Vera is nervous about something with her boyfriend on the merry-go-round. John isn't interested in the Same. games at the arcade, and Vera is nervous about with her boyfriend on the merry-go-round. Okay. John isn't interested in playing the games at the arcade. Good. And Vera is nervous about sitting with her boyfriend. 
John isn't interested in playing the games at the arcade and Vera is nervous about sitting with her boyfriend on the merry-go-round. Okay, Rosa, you're last and I'll just get some space for you. Okay, here we go, Rosa. Jack is worried about his children something ill on the right. And the second one, Ron is thinking about something Alicia to the park. Jack is worried about his children mm -mm, ill on the rides and Ron is thinking about mm -mm, Alicia to the park. What do you think? Jack is worried about his children getting ill on the rides. Mm -hmm. Ron is thinking about taking Alicia to the park. Good. Jack is worried about his children getting ill on the rides and Ron is thinking about taking Alicia to the park. Very good. Thank you, everyone. Now let's finish the exercises on gerunds. Uh, you can make sentences for me using the verbs I give you. Rosa, you use avoid. Monica, can't stand. And Louis, how about you use enjoy. What are your sentences? What's your sentence, Rosa? I always avoid riding on the go-karts. Very good. Monica, yours? They can't stand going to amusement parks. They are a waste of money for him. Good. Louis, your sentence. I don't enjoy entering the spook house anymore. I'm too old. Great. Thank you. And now, let's do some exercises with infinitives. Let's make some sentences with it plus the gerund. Rosa, you make a sentence with difficult. And Monica, you make a sentence with exciting. And Lewis, you make a sentence with boring. Rosa, what is your sentence? It is difficult to go on all the rides in one day. Great. Lewis, yours? It's boring not to be able to go on the rides. Excellent. And your sentence, Monica? It's exciting to see all my friends at the park. Great. Thank you. Now, let's do an exercise using a verb plus a pronoun or a noun plus an infinitive. I'll give you a sentence and you fill in the gap with the appropriate noun or pronoun and then add an appropriate verb. Okay? okay. Lewis, you can go first and let's just get rid of this stuff on the board. Okay, what's your sentence, Lewis? Please tell someone to do something. The tickets now. Please tell Mm. Mm -mm. The tickets now. Please tell Mark to buy the tickets now. Good. Please tell Mark to buy. Please tell Mark to buy the tickets now. Good. Rosa, you can do this one. Don't forget to remind something, something, the children up early. We want to get to the amusement park before it opens. Don't forget to remind mm, 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 the children up early. We want to get to the amusement park before it opens. Okay. Don't forget to remind Tom to wake the children early. Uh-huh. We want to get to the amusement park before it opens. Good. Don't forget to remind Tom to wake the children up early. We want to get to the amusement park before it opens. And the last one is for you, Monica. Rita invited her something, something on the merry-go-round with her. Rita invited her mm, 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 on the merry-go-round with her, Monica. Rita invited her boyfriend to go on the merry-go-round with her her boyfriend to go. Good. Rita invited her boyfriend to go on the merry-go-round with her. Excellent job, everybody. Very good. Thank you, everyone. Let's do one more exercise with infinitives. A little bit different. I will give you the infinitive in the sentence or the negative infinitive, and you guys give me a verb. So, Monica, 
You can go first. Okay. Let's just clear the board again. And here we go. Monica Lance has something not to go to the amusement park this year. Lance has mm, not to go to the amusement park this year. Lance has decided not to go to the amusement park this year. Good. Lance has decided not to go to the amusement park this year. Rosa, one for you. Mary is something to buy tickets for her children, Rosa. Mary is mm -mm, to buy tickets for her children. Mary is waiting to buy tickets for her children. Good. Mary is waiting to buy tickets for her children. And Luis, the last one's for you. My friend, something to have enough money to take all of his children to the park. My friend, mm, to have enough money to take all of his children to the park. What do you think? My friend hopes to have enough money to take all of his children to the park. Excellent. My friend hopes to have enough money to take all of his children to the park. Right, the last exercise in what has been a lot of exercises. I'll give each of you a verb. I want you to give me two sentences. In the first sentence, uh, follow the verb with the gerund. In the second sentence, follow the verb with an infinitive. Luis, your verb is start. Rosa, like. And Monica, hate. Luis, what are your sentences? You should start eating now. We'll go on the right soon. You should start to eat now. We'll go, right, we'll go on the right soon. Good, good. Your sentence is Rosa. Fred doesn't like going on the ferry swell. Fred doesn't like to go on the ferry swell. Excellent. And Monica? She hates carrying her children's prizes at the park. And she hates to carry her children's prizes at the park. Good. Thank you. Good job, everyone. Now it's time to listen and write. Listen and write. Now it's time to listen and write. Listen and write the sentences you hear. Number one. Riding the bumper cars is thrilling. Hank has a new job at the park. He is responsible for hiring new employees. Number three. Patty avoids drinking too much before she goes on the rides. Number four. She dislikes watching her kids on the roller coaster. Number five. To have a good time at the park is most important. Number six, it isn't easy not to get sick on some of the rides. Number seven, Ted offered to buy Marie tickets for the gondola. Number eight, George encouraged Gina to go on the go-kart. Number nine, I promised my daughter to get her some cotton candy. Number ten, the children seem to be enjoying themselves on the pony ride. Now check your work. Number one, riding the bumper cars is thrilling. Number two, Hank has a new job at the park. He is responsible for hiring new employees. 
Number three, Patty avoids drinking too much before she goes on the rides. Number four, she dislikes watching her kids on the roller coaster. Number five, to have a good time at the park is most important. Number six, it isn't easy not to get sick on some of the rides. Number seven, Ted offered to buy Marie tickets for the gondola. Number eight, George encouraged Gina to go on the go-karts. Number nine, I promised my daughter to get her some cotton candy. And number ten, the children seem to be enjoying themselves on the pony ride. Now read the following story and then answer the questions. Read and answer. Joyce is a doctor and her husband Carl is a policeman. They are used to working many hours each week. They always look forward to going on holiday. Going to Disney World is their favourite kind of holiday. They had been talking about travelling to Disneyland this year, but they decided that it was too far to go. They went to California once and enjoyed driving up the coast. They love to camp out at Disney World. They like to sleep in their tent. They have decided to bring their friends with them this year. They have never been to Disney World. They invited them to come last year, but they couldn't because of their baby. Carl wants his friends to go on Lookout Mountain. It is his favourite ride. He has promised to go with them the first time. Carl thinks Lookout Mountain is the world's biggest spook house. Now listen and answer the questions. Number one, what is Carl's job? Number two, what do they look forward to doing? Number three, where do they like to go on holiday? Number four, why aren't they going to Disneyland? Number five, what did they enjoy doing in California? Number six, do they like to stay in a hotel at Disney World? Number seven, why couldn't their friends come with them last year? Number eight, what is Carl's favorite ride? Number nine, what has Carl promised them? And number ten, what does Carl think Lookout Mountain is? Now check your work. Number one, what is Carl's job? Carl is a policeman. Number two, what do they look forward to doing? They look forward to going on holiday. Number three, where do they like to go on holiday? They like to go to Disney World for their holiday. Number four, why aren't they going to Disneyland? It's too far to go. Number five, what did they enjoy doing in California? They enjoyed driving up the coast. Number six, do they like to stay in a hotel at Disney World? No, they like to camp out. Number seven, why couldn't their friends come with them last year? They had to take care of the baby. Number eight, 
What is Carl's favourite ride? Lookout Mountain is Carl's favourite ride. Number nine. What has Carl promised them? He has promised to go with them the first time. Number ten. What does Carl think Lookout Mountain is? He thinks it's the world's biggest spook ride. See you next time. Bye bye. Practicing English. Thank you. I was doing this really good writing exercise in my class last night. Really? I'm always looking for good writing ideas. What did you do? Well, we got talking about scary rides. You know, roller coasters, theme park rides, and you know, Disney World, Universal Studios. You know, the major scary rides that throw you upside down and do 360 degree loops. Ah, I love those kind of rides. Me too. It seems my class is full of thrill seekers. We talked for over an hour about why people pay so much money to be scared out of their skins and scream their heads off. Hmm. So tell me more. Well, the writing part of the topic is due in two days. I asked them to write about the scariest ride they'd ever been on and why they felt so frightened. And they have to use adjectives to describe how they felt during the experience. Yeah, that's great. So, Monica, you say you like riding big roller coasters and things. Tell us more. It's true. I like riding scary rides. When I was little, my older brothers Ray and Steven thought it would be really funny to take me on a big roller coaster. I was just six years old and just tall enough to get on this mammoth coaster. We were all on vacation in Florida. The ride had corkscrews, a 360 that you did when you were up seven stories above the ground. It was amazing. So what happened? Well, as I told you, my older brothers thought it'd be really funny to get me on the ride and watch me get sick. That sounds like a Big Brother joke. Well, picture this: there I am, beaming, grinning from ear to ear. Was so happy that my two older brothers wanted to take me on this big kid ride. Go on. Well, I was in the middle of the two of them. The ride was amazing, fast and high. We were all screaming our heads off. Then I noticed I was the only one screaming my head off. What happened? Well, as I looked briefly to my right and to my left, there were my two big brothers, and they were green. Ray had already thrown up on himself, and Steve was about to. They looked scared to death, and there I was, just six years old, and laughing my head off. Needless to say, the people behind us were very upset that my brothers had gotten sick. You could imagine what happened to them. Sounds like you like to tell that story. Yes, I do. I like telling that story. My brothers, of course, hate being reminded of it. Luckily for me, my dad took a picture of them coming off the ride, and it wasn't pretty. <laughs> I like going on amusement park rides too, but I can't go on those kind of rides. They're way too scary for me. So, what kind of rides do you like, Carrie? I'm more of a tilt and whirl kind of girl. Maybe a carousel. Maybe the Ferris wheel. Well, you definitely like tamer rides than I do. Yeah, Monica, your rides are way too scary for me. What about you, Dave? Are you a thrill seeker? Well, when I was young, my family could not afford to go to a park and ride such rides, so I don't know if I could handle them or not. Would you like to try a roller coaster? Well, well, it does sound like fun. I like going on roller coasters with people who've never been on them before. I would be willing to go with you the next time you go on one. Cool, a new roller coaster buddy. I'll let you know when I have a day off, and we can plan for a great day. Monica, one request. Okay, Dave. What is it? Just in case I end up like your brothers, let's not take any cameras. If my first roller coaster experience is a bad one, I don't want any photographic evidence. <laughs>